Welcome, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of the Max Jenker Show. In this one, we're going to talk about why you shouldn't fear getting into a rebound relationship after a breakup. And first, let's talk about when should you get into a new re- relationship in general post-breakup, right? Some people, they suggest waiting a few months so you're not an emotional wreck anymore. Other people, they suggest waiting only a couple of days, and they argue that the sooner you find someone, the sooner you will forget all about your ex. Which is a good argument, I think. But then there are, uh, well, other options. You could also follow the popular rule of thumb, wait for half of the length of your previous relationship before getting into a new one. This one never made sense to me, but hey, if it floats your boat, feel free to follow the rule. Or you could simply wait until the option of getting into a new relationship starts to feel fun and exciting. Now, this is personally the piece of advice that I would follow and that I would suggest to most people. But regardless of which rule set or set of advice you follow, there's always a chance that you will stumble your way into what's called a rebound relationship. And that's exactly what most people are, well, afraid the most. Now, a rebound relationship is a relationship a person gets into usually for all the wrong reasons. Uh, To numb themselves from their breakup pain, to make their ex jealous and get back at them, to secure this ego boost and feel like they still matter and that they are still worthy, or to just feel connected to a person again without really caring about them. Generally speaking, rebound relationships tend to have a lot of bad mojo, a lot of bad rep surrounding them. And this is for, sadly, a good reason. They're usually shallow, they usually last for a very short amount of time, so I think the main statistic that I looked through said they only last four months on average. They're often formed on the backbone of one's loneliness and anxiety, and they are hardened and strengthened without really much consideration for this new partner's compatibility or how much chemistry you have with them. And they're also, of course, on average, usually littered with unhealthy, dysfunctional dynamics and a shit ton of drama, lying, cheating, abuse, gaslight, uh, gaslighting, passive aggressiveness, all, all the nine yards, all kinds of really toxic tendencies. So it's, it's really no secret that most rebounds fail and usually fail for the same reason or the reasons a person's previous relationship failed. And this is because an average person never really contemplates why the relationship failed in the first place. In in fact, rebounds, getting into a rebound relationship, a person usually does it without really thinking through how they should approach their relationships in general. Should they approach them in maybe a different way than they've been approaching them so they can basically make them last longer and things like that. So because a person rarely contemplates why the relationship failed, they just keep blindly repeating the same mistakes over and over again, usually bouncing from one rebound to the next over and over and over again. Yet, like, I know I painted a very bleak picture of how rebounds unfold, how they look like, how they function, and it is a bleak picture, it is they just don't have a don't have a good track record of being healthy happy relationships that last period that's fine however there is this un the un not undiscovered but just an unexplored side to the topic and that's all about how rebounds don't actually suck all the time and how they can sometimes actually be a good thing Now, let me walk you through an example, right? Let's say you're a very needy boyfriend. You broke up with your ex because of your jealousy issues. Basically, you wanted to know where your partner was all the time, uh, where, with who he or she was hanging out with, 
and so on, right? And as a result of your jealousy issues, your controlling tendencies, your partner left you. You got dumped. Eventually, though, you find some someone, you found someone else. You force yourself out into the dating world, onto the dating field, and you found someone else, right? And after a few weeks of being with this person, those insecurities that led your initial relationship to fail, they resurfaced, right? They reappeared. You became insecure, you started asking your new partner, are you cheating on me? Are you lying about this? Do you still love me? Bullshit like that, unattractive bullshit that you shouldn't ask like that. However, now let's say that this partner was also in the past controlling and needy and jealous, a very toxic individual, but they've grown from that and they can see their flaws, their past flaws in you in the moment. And therefore, they can handle you with grace. They can handle you elegantly. So instead of trying to argue with you, yes, I still love you, instead of getting defensive, no, I'm not going to cheat on you, instead of getting annoyed and just pulling, uh, pulling away because you sound crazy and you're unrelatable, no, instead of all of that, they lean towards you and they reassure you that they're not cheating, they're not lying, they still love you, they were, are just out with friends. Well, if that keeps happening day out and day in, they, their secure nature, their secure disposition, their confidence, it you just can't help but to absorb some of it. You can't resist really being influenced by your more secure partner. If they keep reassuring you whenever your needy tendencies start coming out that everything's fine, that what you're feeling is normal, that they're not doing anything shady in the, uh, in the background and stuff along those lines. In fact, the more they do this, the more secure that you become, the less you're going to be dealing with your needy tendencies, your controlling issues and stuff like that, your jealousy issues. And after months of support from your new partner, you can actually become secure yourself. To put it in more broader terms, you actually have here the ability to turn a toxic rebound relationship into a healthy one or simply just a relationship. This does come with a caveat, of course, if you find someone who is secure and if you actually are willing and able to learn and grow from this secure stance of your partner. If that is the case, you very well can transform into someone who is secure as well. That's also one of the reasons I tell people, whether you want your eggs back or not, Go and date after your breakup and be sure you don't date low lives, you don't date toxic individuals, that you actually go and date healthy individuals, individuals specifically who are confident, who don't have all of these emotional issues, who don't have a lot of emotional baggage, because you can absorb some of their security and confidence and become more secure and confident in this way yourself. I think you get the point. And here's another way you can think about this, well, this whole thing. Relationships that are not filled with issues, right? They entail a lot of benefits. For one, there's companionship. Humans, we as humans, are hardwired for connection. So finding someone you cultivate a healthy and strong connection with, it drastically improves your baseline happiness because our connection is very much tied to happiness. The more we feel like we have someone we are, we gel with, we are, have fun with, the more we feel we have a strong companionship, the happier we are. And then there's, of course, passion and uh, infatuation that comes with any newly built relationship that makes us feel more desirable and confident, and that also helps us be more secure. And last, there's the whole fact about how couples are less receptive to anxiety and depression, tend to live longer, and possess a greater sense of well-being and physical health than single people. 
So if a new relationship brings so many benefits to the table, maybe getting into a rebound and just risking the the whole feat, maybe that's not such a bad idea. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You break up with your partner. Yeah, sure, it'll hurt, but it will still help you grow as a person. It's going to teach you a lot about yourself, how you approach relationships, how you fuck them up, how you should approach them, and where, let's say, you should direct your self-improvement efforts to avoid fucking up your next relationship. So there's my argument to you, getting into a rebound relationship, be it strategically or simply at random by just dating a really random person and figuring out along the way that this is someone you could have a relationship with, right? It's not as bad as it sometimes seems. It's not that bad of an idea. So just whenever you're dating new people out there, keep this concept, you know, keep this concept in mind. And if you want to go deeper into breakup recovery, my approach for it, download my recovery cheat sheet, link in the description below this video, and of course, maxjenker.com, go check out my blog, especially if you want to check out my products, so my books, my interactive online courses, and my private one-on-one coaching offers. And with that being said, I wish you all the best, I wish you good luck, and take care.